I want to give a special shout out to all my patrons first. Thank you so much to my Biblio Spren, Biblio Howlers, and my Biblio Mansers. It means a lot to me that you give me your extra support for my passion and hobby. Hi everyone, Patek here. Uh, welcome to SFF Spotlight episode 29. As always, we have a lot of topics to talk about, probably almost 30 topics or even 30 topics. Yeah, for those of you who are new here, this is a series of videos where I talk about uh, new book news, uh, new cover reveals, new special editions, new TV adaptation, and new noteworthy release uh, in the adult science fiction and fantasy genre. And yeah, I will just get started immediately. And because today we have only one uh, new Kickstarter to spotlight, I'm going to spotlight that first. PD Entertainment, the publisher behind Olaju, The Age of Origins, has released their new African-inspired fantasy graphic novel, Chayoma, Curse of the Jangura. Volume 1 is titled Kitara Empire, and it is available to purchase now. This is a medieval epic fantasy based on African myth and culture, with secrets only known to the ancients. I've read Olaju, The Age of Origins, and I really enjoyed that one. And now, there is a well-produced motion comic for Chayoma, Curse of the Jangura, available on YouTube. And I think you should watch that, especially if you love African-inspired story and graphic novels. On top of that, the Kickstarter page for Volume 2 of Chayoma, Curse of the Jangura, is available to visit now. I will leave the link to the motion comic and also to the Kickstarter page in the description down below. Once again, if you love African-inspired fantasy story and you love graphic novels, I highly recommend you to check these two out. Let's talk about new book news. First one is regarding the Stormart Archive Book 5. So Brandon Sanderson recently mentioned that he is now 50% through uh, writing the first draft of uh, the Stormart Archive Book 5. And there is a possibility that uh, it depends on the overall quality when he is done with the book. Uh, it might be possible that Stormart Archive 5 will be delayed to the year 2025. And for me, I think as long that this guaranteed the quality of the book to be at its maximum, then do it. Just delay it. Make sure to polish it. From my perspective, because there will be a lot of years before we get Stormlight Archive Book 6, I think it is very important that Book 5, will be, uh, which will be the conclusion of the first part of Stormlight Archive, it is very imperative that Book 5 of the Stormlight Archive will be an amazing one. And I have no doubt it will be most likely the best of the series. Yes, that's my positive mindset regarding this series. Anyway, and speaking of delay, uh, The Navigator's Children by Tad Williams, uh, which is the final book in the Last King of Austin art and also chronologically will be the final book in the Austin art saga until Tad Williams decide uh, the other way around. But it has been confirmed that The Navigator's Children will be delayed to the year 2024. So I guess that means there will be a change in my read along because uh, the initial plan was for me and Alex from Tall Guy Reads to tackle the entire Austin art saga within this year. But I think uh, that won't be the case anymore. Uh, we will at least read Memory, Sorrow, and Thought first, and then we will plan. We will figure out what to do with the read-along for the second series in the Austin Art Saga. There is a possibility that we too will delay the read-along for uh, The Last King of Austin Art to the year 2024. But again, same principle with uh, The Stormlight Archive Book 5 or any book really. If you need more time to polish the book, I really think you should do it. And speaking of the year 2024, uh, Jay Kristoff has announced that the second book in the Empire of the Vampire Trilogy title Empire of the Dam will be released in March 2024 and I assume this will be in a lot of people's most anticipated list and I really uh, I had mixed feelings regarding Empire of the Vampire I really disliked the first half of it but I absolutely love uh, the second half of Empire of the Vampire. Here's hoping that Empire of the Dam will be a thoroughly enjoyable book uh, when I get around to it. And also, just like the first book, there will be tons of interior illustrations uh, by uh, the same artist, Mono Lime or Mono Lime, inside Empire of the Dam as well. And the next topic, I think a lot of you know about this already, but Patrick Rothfuss has announced a new uh, novella in the world of the King Killer Chronicle. And the title, this is a great title, uh, The Narrow Road Between Desires. This is advertised as a new story in the world of Tamaran or the world of the King Killer Chronicle, but actually, okay, you know what, not gonna lie, when I first found out about this, I was super excited. I thought we finally managed to get a completely new story in the world of the King Killer Chronicle, in the world of Tamaran. 
But apparently this is not a completely new book. This is an expansion over a short novella titled The Lightning Tree which focuses on Bass, one of the main supporting characters in the Kingkiller Chronicle. And I love The Lightning Tree. I have no idea whether I will end up loving this one significantly more compared to The Lightning Tree or not, but Rothfuss said that this one will feature more uh, artworks by Nate Taylor who also did the interior illustrations to The Slow Regard of Silent Things and this book will be bigger than The Slow Regard of Silent Things. But I feel a bit mixed about this now because although I am excited to be getting a kinda new story in the world of the King Killer Chronicle, but at the same time Rothfuss still hasn't addressed the one chapter issue that happened two years ago, uh, almost two years ago. I feel like this is something that he really need to address. It's not even about the missing chapter for me, but it is about because he has practically scammed a lot of readers into, well, donating, which is good. Donating to charity uh, is good. But well, not at the expense of false promises, and that's exactly what happened here. So yeah, I would be lying if I said that. I'm not completely excited about the new book uh, or the new story in the world of uh, Tamarant, but at the same time, uh, that excitement is also kind of tarnished because of, well, Rothfuss refusal to address the missing one chapter of book, uh, book 3, uh, The Doors of Stone. Let me know your thoughts regarding the situation. Are you excited about this novella or are you still uh, feel, or do you still feel disappointed regarding the missing chapter? One more topic before we talk about new anime and also TV show and movie adaptation. Well, uh, this is for Of War and Ruin by Ryan Cahill, which is the third book in the Bound and the Broken series. Uh, for those of you who keep asking me regarding the audiobook, well, it is ready now. It is available to get on Audible now, and that's 44 hours of stories that you can get with one credit. And it is awesome. It is an awesome book. I don't know regarding the quality of the audiobook because I don't usually use audiobook to consume my stories, but well, for those of you, I know a lot of you do use audiobook well, it is available now, and I think this is the best book of the series so far. Now let's move on to the next section of SFF Spotlight. Time to talk about uh, two animes and also uh, three TV show and film adaptation. Uh, the first one is the season two, uh, the trailer for the season two of Jujutsu Kaisen. The new trailer and possibly the final trailer is available now, and it's looking pretty damn awesome. If you are a fan of Jujutsu Kaisen, and like me, you really should check out that trailer. It is amazing. And for those of you who have read the manga, how about that? We finally get to see Toji and Gojo together in the screen. I am pretty excited about this and the anime is coming very soon. I think it is in the month of July. So yeah, very soon. And the next topic is about One Piece. Well, One Piece episode 1062. Yeah, for those of you who watch One Piece and also read the manga, I think you have you will have watched that US episode and it is absolutely epic. It is about uh, Zoro versus King and it is incredible. It is truly one of the one of the most incredible animation I've ever seen on an anime. It is just spectacular and amazing. They really did such a great job with the battle. But the news is this, that episode end up being the highest rated One Piece episode of all time. That is amazing. Out of more than 1,000 episodes, this is the highest rated one. And I think it is well deserved. I think One Piece anime is about to go very insane. And for those of you who have read the manga, you will know what I'm talking about. Yeah, it is the anime will about to go absolutely crazy. And I am super excited about this. And speaking of super excited, it is time to talk about a film adaptation. Because Joe Abercrombie recently dropped a bomb. Yeah, <laughs> well, it seems that Best of Cold will be the first out of the first law world to get an adaptation and it will be a movie adaptation uh, by Skydance. And on top of that, Rebecca Ferguson is in talk to star in the show, probably as Monza Morkato. And <laughs> this is super cool. The First Law World is one of my favorite, one of my favorite series of all time. It is my favorite grim dark fantasy series of all time. And it's kind of uh, weird, I guess, to not get uh, the blade itself first, but also at the same time, I can see how this is doable because Best of Cold works really well as a one-off standalone story. Even though I don't recommend that, I still recommend you to read the first law trilogy first before diving into Best of Cold. But yeah, it can definitely work as a movie adaptation and I hope this will happen. Note that with this kind of news, until it is fully confirmed in production, do not assume that it's already happening. But just saying that this is in talk and there's a great possibility 
it will happen it makes me incredibly happy and Joe Abercrombie has mentioned that he's the one writing the script for the movie. As you can see from my facial expression here, I am very happy about this and I hope it will come true and the movie will do justice to the book. I really hope so. And the next topic is about Project Hail Mary. Yes, uh, Best of Cult is not the only one who is getting a uh, movie adaptation. Project Hail Mary is also getting a movie adaptation. Project Hail Mary is, a, is the newest book by Andy Weir, uh, the author behind The Martian. And considering how great The Martian was as a film, I'm expecting that if this ends up coming true, I think uh, Project Hail Mary will be a great one as well. And finally, the last topic on this section is about the season two of The Wheel of Time. Season two of The Wheel of Time has been confirmed to be a release on September 2023. And I am not too sure about this one. Uh, I felt really mixed, mostly negative about season one of The Wheel of Time. I have no idea how they will be able to turn around the quality of it in season two. But well, I guess we'll find out. I know that uh, there were plenty of people who haven't read the books yet and end up enjoying the TV show adaptation quite a bit. So hopefully that will be the case for well, those who haven't read the books, maybe. I don't know, this is such a mixed uh, situation and I know there are plenty of heated discussion regarding the TV show adaptation. And moving on to the next section, it's time to talk about new special edition and this is still related to the topic of the Wheel of Time. Orbit Books, uh, Orbit UK has announced they will be releasing a new special edition of The Eye of the World by Robert Jordan, the first book in the Wheel of Time series. And this edition is practically the same as uh, the special edition with the box set they released last year. But that one, uh, the color scheme was green. This one, the color scheme is red and it doesn't come with the box set. And yeah, other than that, I think it's pretty much the same. But this one is priced so much more cheaper compared to the one with the slipcase. Sorry, not box set, but slipcase. Yeah, this one is priced so much more cheaper. I think currently the price is £25 compared to the special edition of the Eye of the World they released last year, which cost $100 or £100, I think. But yeah. Uh, let me know what you think about this one. I think the new edition actually looks pretty good for its price. And before we talk about the newest star from The Broken Binding, I'm going to mention uh, The Curious King first. Uh, speaking of Joe Abercrombie earlier, well, The Curious King uh, just announced their May update and I think it is on track that The Blade itself Curious King Edition is on track to be dispatched on the month of September. Hopefully there will be no delay on this. The owner of the Curious King, Anthony, and also Joe Abercrombie has discussed their progress and also uh, what to do with the special edition together with the artist, Tommy Arnold. And all of them mentioned the progress is going really well. So yeah, hopefully this edition, this special edition will be in our hands really soon. And Curious King also announced that there are only about uh, 15 or less than less than 15 copies of the fifth season by NK Jemisin Curious King Edition available. So if you are a fan of the Broken Trilogy, this is probably your last chance to get the standard edition, uh, the standard special limited edition of the fifth season by NK Jemisin Curious King Edition. We still have two more special editions to talk about and both of them are from the Broken Binding. The first one is Gods of the Wordwood by RJ Barker and yeah the Broken Binding has announced they will be doing a special edition of Gods of the Wordwood which is the first book in the Forsaken trilogy uh, the newest book the newest series by RJ Barker I am a fan of RJ Barker I have mentioned this plenty of times I love both the Wounded Kingdom trilogy and also the Tide Child trilogy and it makes me happy seeing the Broken Binding doing a special edition for Gods of the Wordwood I hope that this is a sign they will be doing a special edition of the Wounded Kingdom trilogy as well, which I think is an incredible trilogy and super, super underrated. And finally, for the last special edition announced, this is about Ilborn. Yes, the first book in the Ilborn saga by Daniel T. Jackson. The Broken Binding has announced this will be their second book in the Broken Binding Press. The Broken Binding Press is a branch of the Broken Binding which focus on producing super high quality limited edition of self-published fantasy books. Books. The first one was of Blood and Fire, which I'm still waiting. Hopefully it will arrive to my place soon. They have announced that Ilborn will be their second title. I am very excited about this because Ilborn is one of my favorite books. It is one of my favorite debut. Plus, uh, the 
artworks and also the mock-up so far with helps by Katrina Paints looks absolutely beautiful and stunning. Just take a look at this. It will come with the new artwork, new interior artworks, new color maps on the end paper and also gilded edges, ribbon bookmark and many more. This news is right on time too because I will be reading I Duel Sin next month, the second book in the Airborne Saga. The pre-order will begin on the 9th of June if you are on the first tier of subscription in the Broken Banding and the general sale will begin on the 11th of June 2023. So yeah, not long from now. And before we move on to the next section of SFS Spotlight to talk about new cover reveals, I just want to mention one more thing. This is about a pre-order bonus uh, for Lightbringer by Pris Brown. If you have pre-ordered Lightbringer by Pris Brown, the sixth book in the Red Rising Saga, you can submit a receipt and then get some pre-order bonus like digital wallpaper and also 3D printing of Sling Blade. I will leave the link and also every news on this SFS Spotlight. Remember that I leave the links in the description down below. Make sure to check them out. Now let's move on to the next section of SFF Spotlight. It is time to talk about uh, new cover reveals and there are a lot of new stunning cover reveals to talk about today, to spotlight today. I will start from Talon Sister by Jan Williams. This is the first book in the Talon duology and this will mark the return of Jan Williams to the fantasy landscape. I love the Winnowing Frame trilogy and I love this cover art by Julia Lloyd. I love the embroidery that you can see on the detail here, on the detail of the cover art. I cannot wait to read this book. It is one of my most anticipated books of the year and I hope this will be even better than the Winnowing Flame trilogy, which as I said, I really love and I think to this day it is still criminally underrated. And if you haven't read that trilogy yet, make sure to read it. And do not worry if you don't though because Talent Sister and the Talent Duology doesn't take place in the same universe or the same world as the Winnowing Flame trilogy. And the next gorgeous cover reveals to Spotlight is about The Darkness Before Them by Matthew Ward. This is the first book in the Soulfire saga and Matthew Ward is the author behind Legacy Trilogy. I've read only the first book by him, uh, Legacy of Ash. I haven't read all of his other books but I heard uh, the remaining books in the Legacy Trilogy, all of them were incredible and I really need to get around to reading the remaining two books in the Legacy Trilogy. But this one, the cover art is done by Joe Wilson and I think it is so beautiful. For those of you who don't know, Joe Wilson uh, is the cover artist behind CD of Lost Chances by Adrian Tchaikovsky. And yeah, that one also has a beautiful cover art. And this one is beautiful as well. I look forward to reading this one. I do not think this one takes place in the same world as the Legacy Trilogy. So I think it should be safe for you to read this one without reading the Legacy Trilogy first. And then the next cover reveal will be again from a book published by Orbit Books. This one will be for the sequel to Son of the Storm by Sui Davis Okumboa. And yeah, this is the second book in the Nameless Republic Trilogy and the title of this book is Warrior of the Wind. The cover artist is once again Dandos Santos, one of my favorite cover artists of all time who has done many gorgeous artworks, many gorgeous cover art and many beautiful, beautiful interior illustrations. And it's great to see another gorgeous cover art done by him for this series. I really need to read Son of the Storm as well. I own a copy of it two copy of it actually and I still haven't read it yet like usual because there are just so many books in my TBR there are so many review requests coming to my uh, place every day coming to my inbox and my place every day I'm not complaining this is great thing but just so many of you understand that it is hard for me to get around to some books, even if I already own them. And then the next cover reveal will be for the US edition of The Inheritance of Magic by Benedict Jaka. This is, uh, Benedict Jaka is the author behind Alex Veru series. If you see, if you saw my book haul video, my recent book haul video, you will see that I have acquired a copy of the 11th and the 12th volume in the Alex Veru series, which is uh, an urban fantasy series supposedly suitable to those who love the Dresden Files by Jim Butcher. I haven't read any books in the Alex Verus series yet, but Alex Verus has been completed and The Inheritance of Magic is a completely new book in a new world by Benedict Jaka. I think this cover art looks beautiful. I have no idea whether the UK edition will feature the same cover art or not. Hopefully it will be the same. Hopefully. If not, then I hope it will be an even better looking cover art than uh, this one. So for the past few topics, I've been talking about new gorgeous cover art, new beautiful special edition. Well, for this one, I cannot say too much positive things about it because uh, this is a new cover art to Aeronauts Windlass and also I hope this is not the final cover but I think it is. This is the cover to the second book in the Cinder Spire series. The long-awaited Olympian affair and 
I must say I am not a fan at all of these two cover art. Not a fan at all, especially for The Olympian Affair, which honestly looked like a YA fantasy romance book. Maybe that's what they're going for based on the content, but I really don't think that would be the case. I don't know whether the UK edition will feature the same cover art or not. I thought we will be getting a new cover art by Chris McGrath, which has done uh, the cover art for Aeronauts Windlass, the first edition, and also the Dresden Files, but apparently not for this one. It's sad to see and it is an unfortunate event. I don't know whether there will be changes done toward this cover art or not, but yeah, it's a shame. And we still have five more cover reveals to spot at today. I will start from the next one and this is a new book by P. Jelly Clark and this one features a cover art done by Martina Fachkova. Martina Fachkova has done plenty of beautiful artwork, beautiful and stunning artwork featuring character in the cover art like The Justice of Kings and the sequel, The Tyranny of Fate. Yeah, these two books features a new cover art by Martina Fachkova. And for this one, The Dead Cat Tail Assassin by P. Jelly Clark also features a cover art by Martina Fachkova. I think it looks stunning. It has been advertised as John Wick meets Dungeons and Dragons. But I love Master of Jin by the author. It is such a great book. It was one of the most surprising books that I read I think two years ago and I expect this one will be another great book from him. And the next cover reveal will be for uh, Wicked Problems, the second book in the Craft War series by Max Gladstone. Just like the first book in the trilogy, this one has a cover art done by Goni Montes and yeah, it looks stunning in my opinion. I have no idea when I will get around to reading this series because I have read only the first two books in the craft sequence and if I wanted to continue with that series, I definitely need to do a reread of the craft sequence series and I have no idea when I will be able to do that. Plus, I'm also not a fan of the second book uh, in the series, so yeah. But this cover art definitely looks beautiful and if you are a fan of Max Gladstone books, well, do know that this cover art has been revealed now. And the remaining two cover reveals, both of them will be for a self published fantasy book. And the next one is the one that I did the cover reveal for. This is for The Circle of Kirke by Matt Larkins. This is the eighth novel in the Greek inspired or Greek mythology inspired or retelling epic fantasy series by Matt Larkins. And yeah, this one, just like all the books in the series, features a cover art done by Felix Ortiz, my friend Felix Ortiz, and also the same cover designer as always, uh, Sean T. King. I have always been interested in Matt Larkins' books, whether it's the Norse inspired uh, fantasy series or the Greek inspired fantasy series. I will definitely read them someday, plus, his books features a map done by my favorite cartographer, my favorite fantasy cartographer of all time, Francesca Beirald. And yeah, I look forward to reading this book. I look forward to reading this series. And the final cover reveal of today's video will be for Gold, Lock and Key by E.J. Doble. This one is a novella and it is a grim dark fantasy retelling of children's fairy tale. I have no idea what they will be about. I haven't read them yet, but I have owned a copy of this one and also the cover art actually contains some plenty of great details regarding the content of the children's fairy tale that I think the author will be doing a retelling from. I look forward to reading this and also, well, his debut novel, Fangs of War, which again is a grim dark fantasy novel. And speaking of grim dark, let's move on to the final section of SFF Spotlight. It is time to talk about noteworthy release. The first one, which is slated to be released today, the sequel to the Trials of Ashmount, Buzzard's Bowl. And yeah, this one has a beautiful, beautiful cover art. I think this new cover art is even better than the cover art to the first book. Absolutely stunning. I heard plenty of great things about this a supposedly character-driven grim dark fantasy uh, series. I look forward to reading this one, but do know that if you have read Trials of Ashbound, the sequel is available now. And The Buzzard's Bowl isn't the only beautiful self hobbies fantasy book that is being released today. Because Of Thieves and Shadow by B.S.H. Garcia, a debut fantasy novel, is also being released today and it has a cover art illustrated by Jeff Brown an incredible cover artist. And I really love the increasing quality of self published fantasy book cover art lately, and I look forward to reading this one. Lastly, we have another self published fantasy book being released today, and this one is absolutely stunning. This is for Of Deeds Most Valiant, the first book in the Poison Saint series by Sarah K. L. Wilson. Of Deeds Most Valiant is to Paladins what Gideon the Ninth is to Necromancers. And the entire series, Poison Saints, is a series of standalone Paladin novels linked by being set in the same world and also linked 
by all featuring Paladin characters. Each aspect or Paladin order has their own idiosyncrasies and how they play out when trouble comes is the catalyst for many stories. The stunning cover art is done by Bastian Jess and the lovely design for the cover art is done by the author herself. And to make things even better, if I'm not mistaken, the naked hardcover edition of this book comes with a gorgeous and different cover art by Alice Duke. This means you will be getting not one, but two cover art by getting a hardcover copy of this book. I haven't read this book yet, but I love the production value and care given to the book, and I look forward to reading it for sure. And it is always great to have a fantasy series consisting of standalone novels. And then the next noteworthy release to spotlight today is about The Perilous Times by Thomas D. Lee. I think this one is an Arthurian retelling, and I heard great things about this one. Again, I own an advanced reading copy of this one for months now, but again, as usual, I still haven't got around to it. I really love the cover art of both the US and UK edition, but the UK cover art definitely reminded me of This World by Terry Pratchett, and that that is a good thing because I love uh, the cover art of This World series, the books in the This World series. And correct me if I'm wrong here, but if you have read Perilous Times, I think the author has mentioned that Terry Pratchett is actually one of his main inspirations. And finally, the last noteworthy release and the last topic of today's video is of course to spotlight the release of The Wheel of the Many by James Eilington. This is the first book in the higher RK series. I already did a full spoiler review of The Wheel of the Many on my channel and also I did an interview with the author as well. It was such a great opportunity and privilege to actually be able to talk to James Eilington about the Lycanian trilogy and most of all, uh, the Hierarchy series and The Wheel of the Many. And for those of you who don't know, The Wheel of the Many is still my favorite book of the year. I highly, highly recommend you to pick this one up. I know I will be doing a second read of the book before the release of the sequel next year. Uh, the title of the sequel will be The Strength of the Few and based on how much I enjoy The Wheel of the Many, I know I will be doing a second and read of it before the release of the sequel next year. So that's it. That's the end of today's episode of SFF Spotlight. This is episode 29. And as always, I'm always grateful to all of you who keep SFF Spotlight running on my channel because without uh, the views and also your interest in SFF Spotlight, I do not think I can actually be able to keep this one up because this series of videos actually do take time, but they always felt worth it. Because I know SFF Spotlight means I will be doing a favors to some fantasy readers and sci-fi readers who want to be updated regarding the newest things going on in the adult science fiction and fantasy genre. But yeah, do let me know what you think about today's episode. Let me know which news here excited you the most. I know there are a lot of topics here. I think there are um, almost 30 or maybe 30 topics. But as always, uh, thank you so much for watching and thank you for your support. Bye-bye. Lastly, I want to say thank you so much once again to all my patrons who keep on supporting me.